Well, I wish I could give you the tea, but mine's just a little bit tart, and that's why it's called Leah's Lemonade. And I have a really, really special guest at the lemonade stand today, Insecure's own Yvonne Orgy. How are you? What up, though? I'm doing very well. What's poppin'? Nothing much. First of all, we got to say thank you very much for joining us. You know, KYS is your hometown station, so thank you for showing love to us because you don't have to, so we appreciate it. What you mean don't have to, man? I grew up listening to, to WKYS. I, I was I, 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 I lived in Calverton, I, then I moved to Laurel, so I, I'm, I'm all about many people now, and I know what it is. Period, Pooh. I'm glad you know. Okay, so listen, and you always show love because you're hashtag from Legos to Laurel, so I, I always appreciate that. And um, we've been hearing quite a few references to uh, PG County and D.C. in the last recent couple episodes of Insecure. Is that any of your doing? I will say that we have a writer in the room named Kenzie, um, mm-hmm. who actually started two seasons ago as a as a PA. She went to Howard. Yes, Howard, H U. Look around. Yeah, H U by son. Period. Uh, she stuck <laughs> around and uh definitely influenced the uh P G County line. But I, as a fellow P G County, I appreciate it and I rock with it. So it, I, I'm glad it stuck. Okay, yes, because we were on Twitter acting a whole ass because we were hype about the Pretty Girl <laughs> County reference. We appreciate it. All day. Now, um, speaking <laughs> of Insecure, you're on HBO, and you have a new comedy special coming to HBO called Mama, I Made It, June 6th. Tell people what they can expect. Man, you can expect to see uh, the real me, right? You can, you know, because y'all used to see me as Molly, but this is Yvonne. I'm coming at y'all. Uh, going back to my roots in many ways, right? I shot some of the special back home in Nigeria. I obviously shot some of the special at uh, the Howard Theater. Yes. But also my roots of comedy. You know, most people found out about me through Insecure, but what they don't know is I've been doing stand up since 2006. Yes. So, you know, this is kind of like a rediscovery of my roots, and I'm excited to share that aspect of my life with, you know, with all of the fans and the viewers, and for them to also like to, to, to get laughs, you know, right. I, we we are who we are in need of some serious laughter right now. Because yeah. if not, we're gonna cry. Yep. There's so much going on right now, girl. That uh, that we we need to just ha ha. <laughs> No, no, completely 100% true. And it's funny, too, because I was saying I was going to interview you and there were some people who were literally like, I, I didn't know she did stand up. I just I just knew her from Insecure. So that is spot on. And um, in the trailer, we see that you go back to Nigeria. Talk about um, why it was important, because, I mean, some people just do stand up where it's literally just the, the stand up, the actual comedy portion. But why was it important for you to go back to your roots and show people where you come from? Well, it's funny because I, I pitched the special. I told HBO, I was like, basically, what I want to do is give you guys a documentary music video <laughs> comedy special. Okay. They're like, what? I was like, I'm Nigerian. Rock with me. <laughs> um, because, you know, I always say, like, you know, this is the only special I get to do. I want to make it special in yeah. a way that is also very different. You know, my parents are, you know, in their 70s and, I want to honor them because what they did was they left their country to come here to give me and my siblings uh, opportunities that we could never have imagined. And so yeah. now that I have these opportunities, I want to go back there to show, to highlight and honor them, you know, for their sacrifice. And right. so that was really my, my main point is just like, Hey, y'all, y'all didn't have to do what you did and I don't have to come back here, but I, I did. And I want the world to see the people behind my success like you see me and that's cool but like you need to see them (laughs) because that's who I was doing it for and you know that's who gave me and instilled in me the tools to make it so that you can even see me so I'm like take me out of the equation and go see them and that was really it was great for me to be able to give them a platform to use their voice to voice their opinion, to share their perspective, because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the one with the mic. Right. And it's easy for me to talk from my uh, purview, but it was really special for my father and my mother, and especially for me to go back to my father's, like, my father's father's land yeah. to show the village, to show his home. And I, I could see the pride swelling in him. And just to be able to give him that gift in my special, I'm like, yeah, there's nothing, else. there's no other way I would have done this. I, I No. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the things that I appreciate, too, is because I think right now in the past couple of years, I think African people coming up with their roots and trying to figure out where they're from has become like a thing. You know, Black Panther, I think a lot of black people are trying to learn more about Africa. Sometimes that story is told through other black people, which there's nothing wrong with that. But it's nice to see Africans share what Africa is. You know what I mean? And again, nothing wrong with it, but I just think it's refreshing to watch you take us to really what it is, not someone's interpretation of what it is, if you get what I mean. You know, I feel like, you know, for me, and I say this in the special, being African wasn't always cool. Yeah. You know, being African I was not always celebrated. Yeah, for And real. what I appreciate about my parents is they never allowed us to, like, assimilate. Like, that wasn't an mm. option. Like, you know, how most people are like, oh, yeah, I'll just drop this thing that's not sexy right now to pick up the thing that everybody is cool with and like <laughs> right, that. And right. I was like, what? You'll call me home next month. And you're like, what? You know, like, there was no opportunity <laughs> right. to not be Nigerian in my house, in my community, whatever. And so, and I'm grateful to that because it took a while for that to come full circle and be celebrated. Right. But it was never a thing that I personally was ashamed of. And so for me, I to be able to fully encompass who I've who I've always been and showing you all as viewers my home, like both of my homes, because I, I am equal parts Nigerian and equal parts American. Right. It felt it felt you know, to a point what we do see of Africa is a caricature, you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. to America. It's For like, sure. it's not not real, but hysterical. You know, Black Panther, I, right. I love to go to Wakanda. It's, I want some vibranium in my life. Right. But also not real. Um, but what I am able to do is show you, like, yo, this is home. Like, it, in the good, the bad, the indifferent, you know, we got we got popping clubs. We have people who drive, you know, Bentley. Right, too, right. But we also have their roads as well. We have yeah. bridges and paved landscape and we also have villages so it's just kind of like yo we got everything here and i i wanted to be able to normalize what going home looked like i wanted to be able to normalize what nigeria looks like because for me and i think i think people who watch it they'll see through their eyes and they'll see different things when i watch it it's just so normal to me Mm -hmm. that i may miss what other people see because i just see home Mm -hmm. i just see my daddy's house and other people may be like, oh, my God, do you see X, Y, and Z? And I, I, I personally love that because I can see my my home anew through other people's lenses. Yeah. So I'm, 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 uh, I'm really excited to see what everyone sees. Yeah, no, that's really exciting. And congratulations again on that, because I think it's just super dope that HBO has given you Amanda Seals. You know, they're giving black women the opportunity to create. And um, it's just dope to watch them you know, help you all fuel your, fuel your dreams. Um, now, I live in an amazing home. They, I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't imagine doing this with another uh, network. They were so, they were down from the idea from day one. Like that was not even a conversation piece. Dope. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it just it just seems like they're um, into you all creating um, your narrative um, because again, you wanted to portray Africa. I know not every network would probably want a special where someone's going to Africa or you know Amanda Seals where she talks about criminal justice and the black experience. So it's just really refreshing to watch um, them champion behind you all and you know, fuel your creative outlets. Now, I have to ask you about this. So you and Issa were doing an Instagram Live and you guys were talking about Carrie Washington and the episode she directed and what type of director she was. And a lot of people were trying to figure out, was it Shay? What what was the experience like? Because from what I perceived is y'all were saying she pushed y'all outside of y'all's comfort zone. But what was the experience like working with Carrie, Carrie Washington? Oh, oh my gosh. No shade whatsoever. Carrie's amazing. <laughs> like... Carrie is actual, like, boss beast. Like, she is that chick. Um, yeah, no, I mean, she brought, what's funny is she brought uh, such a, a power to set, but mm-hmm. also such fun. You know, like, she, you, you know, you, you're, you're getting a Oscar winner, you're getting a Golden Globe, any winner, you're just like, you, like, you don't know what the energy might be. And she shows up in her tracksuit and fresh nights and it's like, all right, guys, what up, though? And it's like, okay, oh, you are here. Okay. We ready. <laughs> are you chilling? You know, and it was just, it was so cool to play with her um, and for her to kind of like come into our world and play with us and also elevate the world in a different way. 
Right. Um, she was directing as somebody who's also a fan. Like, uh, what I love about her, she's such a purist because, you know, we did the table read and, mm-hmm. you know, we were reading her episode and the episode after back to back. Um, she had directed episode nine and then we were reading episode nine and ten. And after her episode, she's like, all right, I'm leaving. Because she's like, I don't want to know what happened afterwards. I don't want to. She's like, I'm a fan, and I want to be oh. surprised. And she, like, left the room. We were like, what the heck? Oh, she was committed. She's like, I don't yes. want to spoilers. I don't want to know. And I thought that was just so, that was, like, as an artist, because she's also an artist, and she gets our world, she gets what we're doing and what we're creating. And I, I think she was just, she was, we've had a lot of, um, um, performer directors directors you know we've had Regina right. King we've had Debbie Allen we've had you know Jay Ellis recently and now to have uh Carrie is it's just so refreshing to see the take that they all have and the and the freedom they allow us to work because yeah. they've been us you know what I mean like they know they're like we know what you do. like this is what y'all do you act because I'm an actor too right here's what I can like here's what I can offer you from a different land as a director and Carrie for sure like she pushed I, I, I speak for myself. She definitely pushed me to a different place. And sure, in the moment, you're like, I can't. I don't think I can get go any further, ma'am. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't. I think this is as far as we go. And she's just like, and then she brought in some tricks, and you know, her bag of tricks. And I was like, this lady really okay. She I is. Why you got all the awards, <laughs> you know? And so it was. It was beautiful. It was. It was beautiful to watch. Uh, you know, excellence in action. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, speaking of this season of Insecure, obviously, Molly uh, turned from a fan favorite to a fan not so favorite real quick this season, real swift. Uh, And I saw your conversation with Kendrick and you kind of defending Molly. Um, But as Yvonne, just with some of the things that have taken place, do you do you still stand on Team Molly or are you Team Issa or you just see both? I see. Here's the thing. Uh I'm able to see all aspects of this because um, what I know is that we've been conditioned for four years to see things through Ethan's point of view. She's our hero. She's our protagonist. That's real. So we're going to fight for her. We're going to love her. We're going to make sure she's protected. That's what she's supposed to do. That's, that's every good TV show needs you to be rooting for somebody, right? Right. Um, I think most people are rooting for the relationship to be restored. Mm-hmm. But for the people who are very quick to be like, Molly is a problem. I, I think it's hysterical because I, it makes me wonder how much grace we have for ourselves. Wow. Um, mm. Especially when we may be in a season of transition, when we are trying to figure it out. You know, I see the comments that are like, Molly don't deserve Andrew. He's too nice. He's too kind. He's too patient. And it's like, wow. So as brown women, do we have to be perfect in order to be loved? Come on, Yvonne. Come our- on. Preach. <laughs> I just, I, it's, it's just really interesting because I think it, I think how we project ourselves in the world is a reflection of how we feel about ourselves, right? Yeah. And so it's just like, wow, in order for the masses to, to have a quote unquote good man, does that mean they have to be the best version of themselves? So like they can't have somebody who makes them better? Obviously you have to do the work. You can't just like put all your trauma on somebody else. Right. But it's just, it's just interesting to me how it's like, you know, we do have cancel culture that's very quickly <laughs> yes. like, darn, darn the 20 years, darn the four seasons of goodness that you've been. We don't care about the last three years. Because <laughs> you're trash uh, now. Episode two, episode two of season four, as far as we can find, you ain't never done nothing good. You ain't never been nothing. You ain't never been It's like, dang, never? You know, and it's just like, wow, wow. You know, it, it goes back to that, like, what grace do we have yeah. as a community? What grace do we have for ourselves mm. and for other people? It's like, sure, people can have trash moments, but right. is there any redemption to that? I mean, like, yeah, hey, listen, a lot of us are, are, are spirit-led individuals. We are, Praise you know, the Lord. it's like, where, where, is the, where is the room to grow? Where is the room to learn? Because most people learn the most from their failures. Yeah. And where is that opportunity to give people uh, that space to be like, you know what, this wasn't your best moment, but in it, hopefully you transition to being your highest self. Right. Which is what we want for all of these characters. We want that for, we want that for Lauren. We want him to be the best version of himself. You know, the show is called Insecure. You can't be insecure for the rest of your life. Come on. (laughs) How is that going to work? You know? And so I think, 
our our characters are growing um with the with every season yeah, absolutely. And one thing I will say, too, is I appreciate the fact that y'all are giving these staple black actresses, Kim Fields, Kyla Pratt, all this love on these last couple episodes on this season. So shout out to the writers, Issa, and you guys for giving them their flowers. OK, so this is my last thing. And this is a personal tip. So I am 26 years old. I am waiting until marriage. And um, you are fighting that good fight. You're a bit older than me so sis give me advice because i don't <laughs> listen <laughs> the quarantine's making it well, real first, rough out here sis hey yay yay turn up um uh, well first i would say <laughs> congratulations like listen, <laughs> it, it, it at any age you gotta say like congratulations boo because it's not it's not easy yeah. you know i think it's so funny because there, there are people who will be like you know it's easy for you because you've never done it it's like as if i don't have feelings as if, as if Urges, like, I don't emotions. get tempted by the hormone monsters right. in my life. Like, what? Like, what do you, like, you know, and then it's like, it's on the flip side, it's for anybody who's celebrated. It's like, wow, oh, yes, you have this the problem plan, and now it feels like you're back in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that, that's got to be rough. Um, but I think, you know, one thing that has to say, I am, I'm 10 years older than you, so, and I, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one thing that has sustained me is, one, knowing that this is not a life sentence. Like, mm. it's not, like, it's not, it's not a death sentence. Um, and knowing that the way God has been so good in my life in so many other areas. Come on, sis. He's not, comp- <laughs> he's not going to compartmentalize this and then fall short in this particular Ooh. area. Because I've been the contract today. Come on. It's one thing if I haven't seen his hand just be so faithful and so wow. dope in like my career, my life, my right. mental, my mental, like my ability to be the, my, the best version of myself right. in, in, in taking me from like zero to a thousand real quick. Yeah. I've seen him do that. And for me, I'm like, Yo, that's, that's harder than finding a dude. I'm like, it's 8,000, it's 8 billion <laughs> people on earth. Right. Like, right. Be one with my name on it. Come on. You know? And so I feel that keeping that perspective, for sure help in the in the in the days and the nights that are long and lonely. Wow. But at the same time, it's kind of like yeah, what I want though is not to be attached to so many different people. Right. Right. That's not a that's not a bad thing for a lot of people. That's just not what I want. I want my I want to be attached to one person. I want to know that one person intimately and intricately. I want them to discover me in right. the same way. So I just keep my eyes on what I want. It's kind of like when I was looking to purchase my house, I'm like, yeah, I want to live here. I want to have these things. I want to right. have, you know, and everyone has so many different wants and things that they desire. I'm like, yeah, but this is what I want. And so I looked for nine months until I saw the things that I wanted. Right. And so for me, it's like keeping the thing that I want also as paramount. That helps. And then it also helps, obviously, to quickly decipher Mm-hmm. Who's right and who's wrong? Because mm-hmm. you know when you when you get emotionally invested, when you get physically invested, right? It can uh, it can deter <laughs> your, uh, <laughs> your 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 thinking and your mind frame. It's funny. Like there was a song I want to say either season one. Um, it was it's called D2B. Mm-hmm. And it's like, girl, what's wrong? My man eat. Girl, what's wrong? My man eat. And it's like, well, why aren't you leaving? Because chick D2 bomb. bomb. And it's like. Really? <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's a catchy song, but you're like, hold up. Is that it? <laughs> is that the real <laughs> like, reason? Like, I get it. I, I, listen, I can only imagine how bombing it, how bomb it is, but it's like, you also deserve joy and happiness yeah. and a dude that, you know, will care for you and, you know, all of those things. And like, hey, and that's not to say that you can't get that from a partner if you're not married, because you can. Right. I just choose to want it under the guise of marriage. And so, I feel like, you know, for for those who are down with the weight, uh, keep it sexy. You know, I I I've never okay. liked when I meet somebody who's waiting or who's a virgin. It's just like, you know, I just, you know, it, don't nobody care or anybody looking at me, so I could just, you know, do whatever, be whatever, or just be approved. And it's like, what? Like, no, have fun, Get go your out, life. live your best life. <laughs> you know, right. like put on some nice clothes. <laughs> you know, go. Be out, you know, like enjoy life because you, your, your man's not waiting for you at home because he's not there. So, come um, on. Yeah, I, I, I just, as long, you know, I always say make it clear, but don't make it high. Exactly. So it's just like, I think sometimes people 
are so afraid of how the other person may perceive them when they drop the bomb of like, by the way, like you said, I'm not doing. And I, and I'm like, that's not, that's lack because it's not about how they feel. It's about how you, it's about what you rock in. And it's just like, Oh, by the way, this is a thing that I'm not doing. Uh, what's up? <laughs> like if, if it's cool with you, let's continue. Let's proceed. If not, I appreciate the dinner. Uh, this has been great getting to know you and uh, I'll talk to you later. Right. Exactly. Yvonne, thank you so much. I could talk to you literally for 10 years. So thank you so much for stopping by your hometown radio station, WKYS. I really appreciate you. Again, everybody, make sure you see her new special, Mama, I Made It, on HBO. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much for your time, boo. Congratulations. I appreciate you. All right. Jesus. Have a good one. (laughs) You too. Bye-bye. Grab a cup, throw it back, and sip on all of that.